Oh, here we go. Chapter 8, verse 1, Revelation, it says, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And smoke and incense, excuse me, and the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Praise God. All right. I'll start out and just a reminder, it's been a couple of Wednesdays. We, we, you know, we had a vacation Bible school, then we had revival. And so we're, we're back into Revelations in chapter 8. Remember, uh, once we get this thing loaded up, or we, Pastor James does it, I have nothing whatsoever to do with that, wouldn't know how to do it. But remember to share it, get it out. Remember, we're sharing the gospel when we spread this thing around, try to, try to get it out to five people, at least five people, and share it out and get it out to them as much as you possibly can. Uh, Romans, uh, Romans, Revelations chapter 8. I'm, I'm just going to preface this. Uh, the seventh seal, which is the end of the series of seven, and we'll start another series of seven. So we're ending the seventh seal. We're going to uh, open it, end it, and then we're going to have seven angels blowing on seven trumpets. So everything from the first seven seals to stops. Okay, move I'll on. read on here, and these series of sevens are tied together. Oh, 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 excuse me. Excuse and me. some of them run together. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Asking questions before I get my little statement done. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. Again, more terrible things are going to happen than has ever happened on the earth before. But don't be afraid. We are in heaven. Amen. Now, I want to emphasize that don't be afraid. We're not, we're not telling you all this stuff so you're going to be afraid. That's right. We're telling this stuff so you can be shared, so people will change their lives, Amen. and they'll go to heaven, and they'll, be, they'll, they'll not have to go through this terrible thing. So we're not, all through the Bible, Christ told us, don't be afraid. Several times, don't be afraid. Put your faith and trust in him. Don't be afraid. So That's right. Again, I, I want to I want to emphasize this little part here. We're not asking you to. We're not telling you this to be afraid. We don't want you to be afraid. We just want you to have the knowledge of what's going on. And as you read these things and you uh, learn of these things and you pass them out to people, hopefully people will change their ways and won't have to go through tribulations. Ooh, yeah. And First Thessalonians five three says, uh, "Remember, we started this thing in peace. What was the first seal?" The first horse, the first person, whatever that guy's name was. Anybody know who it was? The Antichrist, the first guy, the first one out there. He started this thing in peace. It's a white horse. The white horse, but the peace didn't last very long. No. <laughs> this is the seventh and the last seal. Remember in chapter seven, there was a pause in God's judgment upon the earth. There was a pause there. Now in verse one, there is silence for about a half an hour. This is very serious. It says, hold on to all you can hold on to. The wrath of God is about to break loose on the earth. Never before has it been like this. This is the calm before the storm. And I stole that, was that from you? I stole that from somebody out there in, in the audience. I, it, 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 I don't remember to marry, I'm not, I think it might've been. But this is, Literally, the calm before the storm. So we have silence for about a half hour. Okay, that was that's verse one. Who who wrote, did you read verse one? We 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 kind of did. When the Lamb broke the seventh seal on the scroll, there was silence throughout heaven for about half an hour. So this is the, the we have the law in the in chapter seven, you know, and now we're in chapter eight, and there's silence for half an hour. And really, it's, it's, it's getting people, be prepared, get ready, because this is the calm before the storm. All right, uh, uh, I know Robert's got his Bible with him back there somewhere. You back there with us, Robert? All right, verse 2. Uh, Revelation chapter 
Revelation chapter 8, verse 2. I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and they were given seven trumpets. All right. Yeah. So here we have seven angels that we've, that we've never, probably never heard of before. This is seven mm -hmm. angels we don't know anything about. They were given seven trumpets of judgment in the Bible. Trumpets were used many times for many different reasons. And there are times when people's voices sounded like trumpets. And we'll give you some examples. All right, Debbie, if you go to Numbers 10, 1 through 10. Jim, Jimmy, if you go to 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52. Mary, if you'd go to 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. And I'm coming right up here to you, Pastor. Sure. Uh, Joshua chapter 6, 1 through 21. Now, we're talking about... Absolutely not. Well, yes. Well, just read and read and read. We're going to talk about trumpets. And Joshua gives us... About, when Joshua's last is... Joshua gives us a very clear picture. But uh, uh, we only had one army guy in here. And so I'm going to ask him to tell us, did the trumpets play any role in the army? Yes, well, tell me, what did the trumpets do in the army? What was what was trumpets for? They actually start your day during Revelation. When the So you, the trumpets start your day. So you hear a trumpet sound. Any any other trumpet things you got going on in the army? Anytime you have a uh, burial for bereavement. Burial for bereavement. So a trumpet sounded for that. So every day the trumpet sounded for something. Yes. You know, to start your day, and it was called Revelation. Revelation. Yeah. What what time did that start? Depending on what activity is going on, anywhere from four to six. Wow. Get up early in the morning. So uh, someone who's been in the army understands trumpets. Trumpets mean this. When we when we watch the old John Wayne movie, they had sounded a trumpet to charge. They had sounded a trumpet to retreat. There's trumpets. And you had to know, I would hate to hear the wrong sound of the trumpet and they were sounding retreat and I charged. You know, you got to know, you got to know a little bit about what that trumpet sound is. Have I given you guys time enough to find your scriptures? Oh, Jim, you say 1 Corinthians for me. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 15. 15. Chapter 15. 50, and 51 and 52. 51 and 52. Okay, all right, I got it now. All right, Debbie, you got numbers? Numbers, chapter 10, 1 through 10. Yes. Now the Lord said to Moses, make two trumpets of hammered silver for calling the community to assemble and for signaling the breaking of camp. When both trumpets are blown, everyone must gather before you at the entrance of the tabernacle. But if only one trumpet is blown and only one leader, the heads of the clans of Israel, must present themselves to you. When you sound the signal to move on, the tribes camp on the east side of the tabernacle and must break camp and move forward. When you stand the signal a second time, the tribes camp on the south will follow. You must sound short blasts as the signal for moving on. But when you call the people to an assembly, blow the trumpets with a different signal. Only the priests, Aaron's descendants, are allowed to blow the trumpets. This is a permanent law for you to be observed from generation to generation. When you arrive in your own land and go to war against your enemies who attack you, Sound the alarm with the trumpets. Then the Lord your God will remember you and rescue you from your enemies. Blow the trumpets in time of gladness to sounding them at your annual festivals and at the beginning of each month. And blow the trumpets over your burnt offerings and peace offerings. The trumpets will remind your God of his covenant with you. I am the Lord your God. So there you had trumpets. And the trumpets sounded, and they meant different things. Mm -hmm. You're in the army, and a guy makes the reveille call, and you go to bed and wrap up and go to sleep. You'd be in trouble, wouldn't you? That reveille mean get up. <laughs> That's what I say. So uh, you, you had to know what the trumpets meant, what the different sound of the trumpet. This sound means this. This sound means that. Uh, you play the taps. You know, at, uh, you go to the, somebody who's been in the army, and you go to their funeral, they play the taps. You know, that means that has a, a solemn meaning, you know. So you, different trumpets mean different things. Uh, Jimmy, 1 Corinthians 15, 51, and 52. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, 
For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. We don't want to miss that trumpet blast, do we? There's one we don't want to miss. The last trump. Says. When that trumpet blasts, I mean, I tell you, we're, we're, we're out of here. We're all going to hear that trumpet blast. So we are. All of us are going to hear it, and out of here we'll go. So uh, uh, God is showing us in his word that he used the trumpets. So this is not unusual for him to use the trumpets in Revelations because he uses the trumpets throughout the Bible. And I, I, I just picked out a few. First Thessalonians 4.16, Mary. Okay. Uh, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So there you go, another trump of God, a trumpet of God. And it, when you, we talk about we talk about this old world, and 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 uh, we talk about seven years of tribulation, and uh, we, you know we we got this depiction in Joshua chapter six. The I, I got the first twenty one verses, but the pastor, you know, he's at liberty to read as much as he wants to. But you look at what we've been studying in Revelations and what's going on, and see how this depiction in 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 uh, Joshua chapter six really reflects on what's going on. It's a God another time gives us an idea of what may be going on, you know. So we'll have a vision of it. And just as a vision of what's going on. Pastor, if you would, Joshua 6, 1 through wherever you want to go. Do you have a preference? NLT? Yeah, yeah, NLT, yeah, please. Okay. Now the gates of Jericho were tightly shut because the people were afraid of the Israelites. No one was allowed to go out or in. But the Lord said to Joshua, I have given you Jericho, its king, and all its strong warriors. You and your fighting men should march around the town once a day for six days. Seven priests will walk ahead of the ark, each carrying a ram's horn. On the seventh day, you are to march around the town seven times with the priests blowing the horns. When you hear the priest give one long blast on the ram's horn, have all the people shout as loud as they can, and the walls of the town will collapse the people can charge straight into the town. So Joshua called together the priests and said, Take up the ark of the Lord's covenant and assign seven priests to walk in front of it, each carrying a ram's horn. Then he gave orders to the people, march around the town, and, uh, and the armed men will lead the way in front of the ark of the Lord. After Joshua spoke to the people, the seven priests with the ram's horn started marching in the presence of the Lord, blowing the horn uh, as they marched. And the Ark of the Lord's Covenant followed behind them. Some of the armed men marched in front of the priest with the horns, and some behind the Ark with the priest, continually blowing the horns. Do not shout, do not even talk, Joshua commanded. Not a single word from any of you until I tell you to shout. Silence. Then shout. So the Ark of the Lord was carried around the town once a day, and then everyone returned uh, to spend the night in the camp. Joshua got up early the next morning, and the priest again carried the ark of the Lord. The seven priests with the ram's horns marched in front of the ark of the Lord, blowing their horns. Again, the armed men marched both in the front of the priest uh, with the horns and behind the ark of the Lord. All this time, the priests were blowing their horns. On the second day, they again marched around the town once and returned to the camp. They followed this pattern for six days. On the seventh day, the Israelites got up at dawn and marched around the town as they had done before. But this time they went around the town seven times. The seventh time around, as the priests sounded the long blast on their horns, Joshua commanded the people, shout, for the Lord has given you the town. Jericho and everything in it must be completely destroyed as an offering to the Lord. Only Rahab the prostitute and the others in her house will be spared, for she protected our spies. Do not take any of the things set apart for destruction, or you yourselves will be completely destroyed, and you will bring trouble on the camp of Israel. Everything made from silver, gold, bronze, or iron is sacred to the Lord and must be brought into his treasure. When the people heard the sound of the ram's horn, they shouted as loud as they could. Suddenly the walls of Jericho collapsed, and the Israelites charged straight into the town and captured it. They completely destroyed everything in it with their swords, men and women, young and old, cattle, sheep, goats, and donkeys. Everything was destroyed. Now you think about that. That's uh, everything is destroyed. You say, "Well, now wait a minute. These are this is God's creation. God surely wouldn't destroy everything. Men, women, children, animals. What He did there, didn't He? 
He sure did. Yes, he did. I mean, and he did when he did when Noah's Ark was here, didn't he? Yes, he did. Why? Why these uh, people on? Uh, I say preachers, but I shouldn't say that. Why these people that pretend to be preachers are saying this is all symbolic and it's not going to happen? I don't understand that. We have times in the Bible when this happened. Mm -hmm. Everything was killed. Mm -hmm. Everything was destroyed. Why, if God did it then in many different places, why wouldn't he do it now? Mm -hmm. Don't know. Uh, uh, I'm going to have uh, Adam, you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. And I'm going to read verse 3. Then another angel with a gold incense burner came and stood at the altar. And a great amount of incense was given to him to mix with the prayers of God's people as an offering on the gold altar before the throne. All right. Whenever you get there, Adam, 1 Corinthians 2, 9. Take your time. Okay. We talked about this a couple Sundays ago. Go ahead. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Amen. Of course, amen. And here's one of those sayings. And another angel. See, and there's another angel here. And another angel, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is in complete charge. Make no mistake about this. He is directing angels here and there and everywhere. But make no mistake about it, Christ is in complete control. And there was given an angel incense to be mixed with the prayers of God's people as an offering. What a marvelous and miraculous sight. We see here that things are going on in heaven that have never happened before. Right. Just like things are going on here on the earth that have never happened before. Mm -hmm. And there's what's going on now has never happened before. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's things going on right now. Now, there's when I was talking about things going on on the earth, I meant during the tribulation period. But there's things going on. So God is preparing us, getting us ready. He's letting us know he's coming back. <laughs> Amen. Right. He's coming back. Amen. He's going to be here sooner than we th think. Oh, is this it? Did you, you you wait till you wait till next week when we get to the when we get to the, no we're probably going to get to that next week. But you wait pretty soon. We're going to get to chapter nine, and you really see some things. Look at all this. Look at the incense. The prayers of God's uh, saints are being mixed with the with the incense, and there's a great smoke. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven angels with seven trumpets. That's good. That's good back there. Now, that's, that's, that's per, per, pretty good. All right. We'll, we'll read a little bit here, a little bit more here. Uh, let's see. I think I'm going to read four and five. The smoke of the incense. Oh, you took it down already. Go back up there. The smoke of the incense. Now, look up there. When I read this, look at this depiction up there now. The smoke of the incense. Mixed with the prayers of God's holy people, ascended up to God from the altar where the angels had poured them out. Now look at that. It's going on up to the altar where God is. See. Then the angel filled the incense burner with fire from the altar and threw it down upon the earth and thunder crashed and lightning flashed and there was a terrible earthquake. Wow. I'm going to go there and give you that again. And thunder crashed and lightning flashed, and there was a terrible earthquake. Okay. We're in four and five. The smoke and the incense mixed with the prayers of God's holy people ascended up to God. Then the angel filled the incense burner with fire from the altar and threw it down into the earth. The people of the earth had rejected God's salvation. Because of that, Christ now sends his horrible, terrible judgment. And here we go. Thunder. I got down here. This is just me, but you guys think about this. Thunder. The storm of God's judgment is coming. Thunder, see? The storm of God's judgment is coming. Lightning. Well, no, it was the next is voices. Voices. Means that this judgment is coming from God. This is a supernatural storm. A storm like we've never seen before on this earth. Lightning. More terrible than the world has ever seen. Striking everything, people, houses, cars, everything. 
earthquakes. The pressure put on the earth is too much for it to handle and it would begin to break apart. The pressure on this earth is too much and begins to break apart. I don't know whether you can find, uh, 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 um, <laughs> I'm, putting it, I'm putting too much on uh, a chip back there, but I don't know whether you can find lightnings and voices and earthquakes and, but now this is the start of it, see? This, this thing is pulled out. God's judgment is starting and we're gonna get in verse six, we're gonna get the first of the, the trumpets is gonna sound and we might get to the trumpet number one here uh, before we break off. But now here it is, thunders and voices. Now you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna be able to look down on the earth and see, oh look here, look here. Oh, they hear thunders and lightnings and stuff all through the sky like it's never been seen before. That's a beautiful, that's a, that's, that looks like a real one. I guess that may be out there in Texas or Kansas somewhere. That's probably a pretty good one. All right, we'll read. We'll read just. We'll read just the first one. I think. But we. I know we won't get any past that one. But, uh, <laughs> well, well, let's read. For, let's, uh, yeah, it, it is that he is. He's not telling no lie. Let's read. Let's read. <laughs> uh, let's read chapter verse six because verse six is. The, the angel don't blow his trumpet till seven. That's right. And we got a lot to, it, we might be over, to, if we might, if, if we won't get it done by eight. So I don't know. Yeah, that's don't start, okay. Yeah, if you want to hit six, but that's. All right, hit, hit six back there, Robert. Verse six for me. Then the seven angels with their seven trumpets prepared, prepared to blow their mighty blast. All right. I got the silence in heaven is about to be broken. With the blast of the first trumpet, the wrath of Almighty God is about to encompass the earth. Now think about that. But what's the Bible say about wrath for, as far as Christians? What's the Bible tell us? It said God has not appointed us to wrath. So the wrath's not coming on us, see? We're not here. God hasn't appointed us to wrath. What's he say about the terrible day of judgment? He's going to get us out of here. Make us a way to escape. We won't have to go through the terrible day of judgment. Praise God. You say, well, well, uh, Jim, we, we've already read some terrible things that's happened. Nothing's comparing to what's going to happen. Nothing's compared. Those, those, those uh, four, four horsemen of the apocalypse and all that, how horrible all that was. It's going to be a lot worse. And in the middle of these trumpets, in the middle of these trumpets, there's going to be a stop because it's going to even get worse in the middle of these trumpets, see? And, and, and you're going to see, you're going to read about things in heaven and you're going to think, wow. But again, this, Jesus Christ is directing this. He, things are going on. He's in complete control. When we think that God's not in control, what's in control? Oh, the coronavirus is in control. No. God is in control. Amen. You know, what, what, what's in control? This organization. No, God's in control. Man, if, if I'm on a church, I'm not going to take the name of God away from that church to put a, a name of another organization on that church. God's in control. That organization's not in control. The Bible says fear God, not man, you know. Uh, 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 the, the, the man might be able to kill the body, but God can kill the body, soul, and spirit, you know. I mean, and, and think about it. We're God's people. We're in his strong right hand. He, he wants to protect us. He wa he, we are his, we're his chosen vessels. See? I mean, why would we fear? You, you know what I'm saying? Don't be afraid. Just over and over, I want to tell you, don't be afraid. Time, how many times do you think that's in the Bible? A hundred? 365. Fear not is in the Bible 365 times. There you go. 365. One for each day of the year. Wow. 365. I'm glad I asked him that question. 360. Fear not. This is not, we're, this, this message is not to make anybody afraid. It's to give you knowledge. With knowledge, there's wisdom. And hopefully, when you make a decision with this knowledge, you'll make the right decision. No, what, what's, what's, what are you, oh, destruction. Yeah. Yeah. Man. So, 
So let me let me just let me just go ahead. Put put some stuff in here because we got it. We got it. Just a minute or two. Um, anybody ever remember being a kid and and going to your going to your you know your dad more than likely, but it could have been mama. But going to your dad and having to give him some bad news. <laughs> and then when you gave dad bad news. When it was real bad, like if it was bad, he'd, he'd you know yell and shout and fuss at you, you know, bad. But it was real bad news, yeah. and there was a pause. Yeah. You remember that? There was that yeah. silence, and you're waiting for dad to react, and he ain't reacted yet, and you're like, oh, snap, I'm I'm about to die. Like what's going to happen? Like there's that there's that pause. So when we look at chapter eight, verse one, and there's a pause in heaven for about thirty minutes. There's so much. Uh, it's described as the the calm before the storm. That's very good. Um, but you gotta, you gotta also think and put this together with this is God's creation. He sent His only begotten Son to die for the entirety of the world. Amen. You understand? Amen. Not just the church, but all those that are also going to get wrath poured out, but they refuse to accept it. Amen. Right? So He is about to do this thing that has been building up for all of eternity, really, all time. And God is about to pour this thing out, this thing out, on mankind, the same people that he loved so much that he sent his son to die for. You imagine the, the anger, the frustration, but also the reality of, all right, we're about to do this. This is about to happen. I mean, it's going to take a second. I, I remember, the, the only thing that gets close is, is I remember playing football. You know, I remember times when I had, when me and my dad had conversations and there was silence. I remember that. But <laughs> the, playing football and you're getting ready to go to war, so to speak. You know, you're getting ready to have that, that battle on the football field for, for however many, 90 minutes, whatever it was. And I remember in the early years, the coach would always fuss at us and say, all right, everybody, no talking for the next 45 minutes, whatever. Get your mind right. Get your mind right. And I always hated that as a, young, as a youngster. But as I got older into the, into the years of my high school years playing football, I looked forward to that because there was a, like there was a moment you were reflecting, you were, you were preparing yourself, going over things in your mind, getting things ready, knowing what you're about to do, expecting, and, and, and even making a game plan, you know, especially if you'd seen this opponent before, all right, this is what we're going to do. And even though you weren't communicating with your, your fellow uh, 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 fighters, if you will, your fellow football players, you, you all were, were getting together in one mind, in one thought. Boy, then that music would come on and woo, we get excited. And we'd go out there and just tear them up. But anyways, you, you imagine though, here it is, God is, is taking a minute. He's taking 30 minutes technically. Boy, and then the music hits. The seven trumpets blast. I'm just saying. Yeah. 30, 30, 30 minutes and he's taking a second. Man, this is this is serious. When 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 you say that it's a it's a wrath poured out like nothing that's ever seen, the Bible says it clearly. It's gonna be like a time that's never seen before. I mean it's it's going to be bad. It's going to be real bad. And, you know, I imagine, you now you think about this, God is almighty, he's all just, he's all powerful. But I, I can see God taking a second and saying, okay, we've done all we can do. Mm -hmm. We've given them as much time as we can give them. You know, I can even, I can even see him looking over there at his son. I mean, have we done it all? Are we sure? Mm -hmm. Are we about to do this? Yeah, we're about to do this. Okay, you're right. We've given them all we had. You, you know what I'm saying? I'm, and then, that's it. And this thing is going to hit. And the very first one, when you, when you read ahead, the very first one is just absolutely terrifying. And there's seven of them. I mean, it's just terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, it's, just, it's just amazing, the destruction and the wrath that's going to be poured out. But it should, it should fear the hell out of you, so to speak, that you would get saved now so you don't have to go through what this is, what this is, is going to come on this earth. That's the point of letting you read this book to know these things are coming, but you need to be so terrified that you drop to your knees and give your life to Christ. Because you don't want to have to live through this. You want to go through salvation now, not through salvation later. Because man, if you have to go through that, there ain't no rapture coming to get you out. It's, it's death. It's, if, you can, if you can somehow die in the midst of all that without the persecution that's also coming, then you might be able to make it. Sure, you drop to your knees, you give your life to Christ, but the rapture's already taken place. 
That's you're, you're, you're just, you're having to tough it out. And so that literally, it's a, it should scare the sin out of your life, should scare the, the hell out of your life, should scare the, 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 the addictions out of your life. It should scare everything out of your life to say, my God, I don't want to go through the first one, let alone all seven of them. So, anyways, as you were saying to begin with, tell, tell everybody, everybody. Yeah, because Satan's got so many people fooled, they, they, they got an uh, illusion from their eyes. Yeah. They don't think it's happening, you know. That's right. That's, that's, very important, that's, you know? that's well, exactly right. And, and they're so focused right now on what's going on in the world right now, whether it's the uh, coronavirus or whether it's the election. or right. and They're so focused on this next month that they can't it's see. Smoke screen, yeah. Yeah, they, they, it is a smoke screen. They can't yeah. see what's just beyond the horizon. Yeah. And what's just beyond is the great tribulation. It's terrible. And yet we, we must tell people. We, we've got to tell people. I want to tell them. I want to go I'm just, I, yes, we, I'm just going to throw this into, because I've heard so many people say 2020 is the worst year that ever has been in the world, or 2020 is the worst year. Listen, we just came out of one of the best revivals I've ever been in my life. May have been the best revival I've ever been in my life. When I look back on 2020, I'm going to say, remember that tent revival we had down there in Spring Hope? And it was the best revival I've ever been in, see? I mean, everybody's talking gloom and doom like nothing good has happened in 2020. Yeah, there's been a lot of good things that's happened in 2020. For those guys that, that shared the, uh, the the thing on Facebook and got it out there, praise God. I, I've had all kinds of people call me up and say, man, what was that? That What's that going on down there at that tent? I've had all kinds of people call me. Man, I saw, the, I saw that revival thing you guys had going on. Man, that was great. How many got saved? How many got healed? How many was filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you know? Really, I don't know how many. But look, we got people in church tonight. From the revival. From the revival. In church tonight, see? Think about that. I mean, praise God, see? We got a lot to praise God about in 2020. We, that's what I'm saying. We, we're serving Christ. Whatever goes on in this world, we pray and pray and pray and all that. You know, but man, there's great things going on. Christ is still in control. God's still in control of 2020. He has the band in 2020. We got a couple more months to go. Who knows what good things God will do before this year ends? You know. So, I mean, amen. Amen. Oh yeah. Like and share and subscribe. Like and share and uh, please get it out to five people if you can. Like, share, five, and subscribe. Five peace. Five, yeah, everybody, five different people. <laughs> Challenge it. Amen. Get it out to five, please.